Today I'm going to talk about this new laptop right here called Azerti Luma and even though this is a brand new laptop from a brand new manufacturer it looks very very familiar because it uses the same Tongfang OEM design as few other laptops on the market do. So some of the more popular ones would be the Electronics Mag 15, Aftershock Vapor or XMG Fusion 15 but I'm sure there are quite a few others that look exactly the same. And this particular product I would say it's not so terribly exciting if you're outside of the EU and can already find a Mag 15 with a nice price tag or you know whatever model with the same OEM is popular in your region but if you are in the EU this laptop will be a pretty great deal for anyone looking for a gaming laptop on a budget. Now keep in mind these Tongfang laptops were available in the EU before but they were usually priced pretty high compared to similarly spec models from other brands while these Azerti Luma models will focus heavily on the price and they will be sold through Amazon making them easily available across the whole Europe. Now this particular model comes with an Intel Core i7 9750H, a GTX 1660 Ti Max-Q, 16 gigs of RAM, a 500 gig SSD and a 144 Hz Full HD display and all of that should cost you 1200 euros which is a lot better than 1500 plus that XMG asks for this same configuration. But because there's this thing called Black Friday that is this week, they decided to sell it for only 999 euros, which is a fantastic price for a 1660 Ti laptop of this quality. So I don't think there's a cheaper option out there at the moment. I don't know how long this price will last, but you know, keep an eye on that. But the beauty of using a well-known OEM is that even if you're not in the EU, this review is good for all models out there that share the same design. So don't go anywhere and keep on watching. Let's go. But if you want a nice and big gaming monitor instead, check out the G32QC from Gigabyte. This 32-inch monitor with a curved VA panel, Quad HD resolution and 165Hz refresh rate is pretty fast and great for gaming. It supports G-Sync and FreeSync and it also comes with an excellent image quality thanks to its exceptional contrast and brightness. Did I mention it's also pretty affordable? Now check it out using the links in the description below. One thing I absolutely love about this laptop is its design and a lack of pretty much anything on it. I'm sure it saves them money not to have their own logo stamped on the lid, but I actually really love this pure minimalism of this laptop. It is sleek and stealthy and it kind of reminds me of a razor blade, but then, you know, without as many fingerprints. It is not large, it is very light and it looks quite neutral, so you can easily drag it to work or to school and no one would guess that this laptop is primarily meant for gaming. Now at first I thought that the chassis was actually made of plastic because it wasn't cold to the touch and it lacked that shine and feel of steel, but it is actually quite sturdy. So I checked the specs and I found out that it's not plastic but actually magnesium alloy that is much lighter than metal but very sturdy and with a very nice texture that is not too sensitive to fingerprints, which is, you know, very important to me at least. But this whole machine is actually really well built. There is barely any flex in the chassis, uh, not on the outside, nor while typing. And on the bottom, you can see there's a lot of ventilation going on. And it's also kind of standing on these long rubber legs to have some air flowing under it, which really helps to keep this compact and light machine cool. But I'll talk about the performance a bit later. Now you get a pretty good set of connections. You get two USB 3.0 ports and an SD card reader on the right side and a fast USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and audio connections on the left side. On the back, there's the charger, gigabit LAN, HDMI out, and a Type-C Thunderbolt port. Personally, I'm a huge fan of having all these big connections on the back of the laptop instead of having them, you know, in your view or even worse, in your way. So in my book, they get a bunch of extra points for that. I am going to deduct a few points because of the size of the power adapter it comes with because considering the fact that this is one of the lightest gaming laptops that you can currently get, the size and the weight of this charger is pretty ridiculous and I kind of do wish they opted for a more compact one to fit the product better. 
Now you can easily open it with one hand and that brings you to a very lovely and a very sleek inside. Uh, and the keyboard is actually a low profile mechanical keyboard, which I really love. It is not too heavy, but it has a very nice clicky feeling to it, which I prefer so much more over the usual thin laptop keyboards. There is a little bit of wobble in the keys, so I would say it's not a 100% perfect experience, but it is much nicer than I usually find in laptops and then even in the more expensive ones out there. Now, of course, if you like RGB, the keyboard is RGB backlit and there is a line on the front edge that lights up as well. Now you can control both of these uh, via the software and I have to say the RGB is done pretty nicely. It is bright enough and it is pretty consistent across all keys. Unfortunately, the touchpad isn't nearly as good as the keyboard. It has a glass surface, so it feels pretty smooth when you move your finger around it, but there's this little annoying ticking sound whenever you even lightly touch it. Uh, the palm rejection isn't working well at all. And it also has this abnormal click on the top part that doesn't really register as a click. So you kind of end up with it responding when you don't want it to and then not working half the time you actually do want to click it. So you kind of really need to make sure that you click in the bottom part, not you know slightly above, even though it feels and sounds like a proper click. So I would say it's very odd. It just makes me wonder if it's sample specific and I was just unlucky with this one as I didn't really see any other complaints in other reviews uh, of other laptops that use the exact same OEM, but you know, I just could not make it work smoothly. It is still usable, you can just get by, or you know, you can just do what I always do. You can disable it by tapping the top left corner and then use a normal mouse instead. When you decide to buy a cheaper gaming laptop like this one, you usually have to settle for a pretty disappointing display. And I'm actually really happy to say that this is not the case here. It's a 1080p, 144 Hertz IPS display that is just really pleasant overall. It offers a pretty decent color performance uh, that you could use for some simple photo or video editing. sRGB color gamut is around 85%, which, you know, isn't perfect, but far better than most laptops out there. The colors out of the box are calibrated reasonably well, and the contrast is pretty good too. Again, it is not completely perfect, but it is ahead of most gaming laptops I tested so far. And I would say it's fast as well. It feels pretty close to your typical 144 Hz desktop monitor. Uh, the panel is specced at four milliseconds gray to gray, and I would say that's the experience you get. So it's pretty good for gaming, especially if you remember that, you know, many of the more affordable gaming laptops have response times in, you know, the 25 millisecond range, which is much more than this one. But let's take a look at some benchmarks to get a better idea of how well it actually performs. And as I said at the start, they decided to go for the previous 9th generation of Intel processors instead of the 10th gen ones. Now, I do believe that that was probably a cost saving measure in this case, but since Intel didn't really change much uh, with their 10th gen, it actually doesn't matter much at all. As you can see in most CPU benchmarks, this i7 9750H keeps up just fine with most 10750H laptops, which means it has plenty of power for things like photo and video editing, graphics design, and so on. And more importantly, it doesn't hold back your GPU either, which is the most important part of any gaming laptop. Now, there is an RTX 2070 model as well that will be a bit more powerful for gaming and a bit more expensive as well, but this GTX 1660 Ti is doing just fine, in my opinion. So you can play all AAA titles on this thing with reasonable settings, of course, or if you play some lighter games or some older ones, it will be super smooth. Now, battery life is quite good as well. You get around five hours and 20 minutes in the PC Mark 8 productivity test and just over seven hours of watching Netflix. So it's not really an all day battery life, but I guess you can leave your bulky charger at home most of the days. I would say thermal performance is pretty good as well, uh, with so many gaming laptops nowadays just going over 90 degrees Celsius on the CPU. 
it's actually refreshing to see a laptop that keeps it around 80 degrees instead with a very reasonable GPU temp of 74 degrees. Now it does get fairly loud at around 45 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, but it's not actually louder than most gaming laptops with similar specs. So all the numbers that you see above are from the default balance mode, but you can actually change profiles using this little button next to the power button. You just need to make sure that you don't accidentally turn off your laptop. Uh, you can also use the software that's included, which I would say it's pretty basic. And I don't really mind that, but the profiles themselves don't make much sense, in my opinion. Now, the battery saver completely limits the GPU power, so that's fine for some very light use, like typing and browsing. But the performance mode uh, actually causes the CPU to overheat and throttle even with the fans running super loud. So basically, if you want to game on this thing, you should just leave it in balance mode and that's it. This laptop does have a webcam, but it is on a very low end. Uh, I guess they had to cut corners here and there, but a few cents more towards a better camera probably wouldn't have hurt that much. Okay, so this is the test of the webcam and the microphone on this laptop. And you know, it's so, so you can see that they cut some corners when it comes to the webcam quality. It's okay if you wanna use it incidentally, that's completely fine. Make sure you have a good light source, uh, but yeah. Could have been a bit better. But the speakers are actually quite nice. Uh, they have a very pleasant sound that's not too distorted and it's not too sharp and it has pretty good volume as well. It's much better than many laptops of the same class or even higher. If you're looking for some reliable and fast external storage, SSDs are the way to go. It doesn't matter if you're just going to use them to copy some files to work from them for example or to keep your games on, they're just such a useful tool to have. Anyways, let's uh, open it up. It is really easy to open it up, it's easy to clean the fans, uh, you can change the memory if you need more, you can replace the SSD if you want to, or you can add a second one. Uh, you can change the Wi-Fi chip as well, but you won't have to because this is already a Wi-Fi 6 chip. I finally kind of understand why so many people were mentioning the Electronics Mag 15 to me, uh, which is the same laptop as this one after all, because honestly, if you put all of this together, touchpad aside, it is a really good laptop with a really exceptional value. Now there's some things that could be slightly improved like the webcam quality, the bulky charger and the performance profiles, but most of it is actually great. It has a very sleek minimalistic design, it has great build quality, yet it's very light, it has a very decent performance and a better display than most gaming laptops on the market, and let's not forget how sweet this mechanical keyboard is. So, if you are looking uh, for a gaming laptop in this Black Friday madness, do not miss on this one. I would say the normal 1200 euros is a very reasonable price to begin with, but for under 1000, I really don't think that you will find a better deal than this one. Now that's it for today. Uh, I'll put the shopping links in the description down below for those of you that are interested in this laptop. And I will also add some links to very similar laptops for other regions as well if you're not in the EU. And if you like this review, do give me a like and subscribe to my channel to never miss an upload. Bye guys, see you in the next one.